Uh, I'm Ahilio Botley. I'm Delia Botley. And we're the teachers for the IA program. The Interdisciplinary Arts Program, program at Ruth Asawa School of the Arts, and it's a project that tries to develop a, a more contemporary art practice for high school students. The idea is to immerse them into um, a, a completely new way of working where we'll take um, uh, their technical skills, which uh, many of them are already great at drawing and uh, at just beginnings of painting, and we'll, we start to help them think about uh, expanding the way they make art, developing their voice became uh, the really the goal is uh, uh, you know along with of course uh, developing content in their work, thinking of their work as they try to create this uh, their their individual voice. So you'll see a lot of the work in the show uh, goes through this transformation. I think when you look at you know their final show, that's what uh, that's that's what you see is this complete change uh, in the work, this transformation that each of the works had undergone. Hi, I'm Luke Jafar. Hi, I'm Noah Bale. Hi, I'm Elena Diebel. In the IA program, I was able to um, kind of expand my, my previous um, notion, notions of art, and I was really able to dive, like, dive into different things about the world that I didn't really consider art at the time. Um, with my, I would never have thought that like found objects, like cigarette butts and um, kind of pieces of trash could be art. So I guess the I program helped me to um, kind of rethink the possibilities of these, these objects and uh, the world, yeah. The teachers would always show us different artists, uh, Gabriela Rosco, Tom Sachs, uh, Marcel Duchamp, uh, all these artists, uh, well, you, you'd show little lectures, you would do little lectures about them and kind of really bring us into the context of their world, the themes they, deal, they dealt with and uh, how they came to be where they are in the art world today. And so that, that kind of gave me a little uh, just picture of, of how, how to achieve my own. Right. I think it was the freedom that we were allowed uh, in the class. It was just, um, I think I'm a s s I, I develop ideas very kind of slowly or meticulously in some ways. Like, I don't, they're not super detailed and um, usually, you know, you would think that I, you would need something very detailed to, to start an art piece, but really, I liked how the teachers were so willing to let me, you know, take time to think and about my work and just develop it at the pace that it needed. My artworks draw directly from my experiences in my life, but I think the, the biggest theme is my environment because that had the biggest effect on me. Um, I live in a, in, a, in a neighborhood that's full of homelessness, crime, and desperation, and uh, I think my environment had um, had a really big impact impact on me, and I had um, it, it kind of changed the way I saw myself and the world. Um, so, in 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 Cigarette Butterfly, it's one one of my favorite pieces. Uh, I transformed debris that um, this lowly material cigarette butts into something that is uh, what I thought was beautiful. And I my what I was trying to do with that piece, I was trying to get people to see my environment, kind of reveal aspects of my environment that people don't really consider or look, think twice about. Um, so that, that, that kind of goes across with a lot of my pieces that deal with my environment. My favorite piece uh, would have to be Warball. I think I liked Warball because it had a lot of dimensions to it, I guess. Uh, the, the work, uh, when you approach it, it, it could just, from afar, it just looks like a ball. It's just this green ball, but as you kind of get closer, you start to realize that it's a little bit more than that, that they're toy soldiers welded together. So it has this very sculptural uh, kind of process of discovery as you go through the work. But then you can also look at it as uh, 
little bit more uh, about the material itself. In this case, I'm using plastic, or these plastic soldiers, and really using their, uh, uh, the properties of that material to my advantage by melting them together, binding them, um, even using their, their strong, uh, the strong qualities of the plastic to hold up this form kind of sphere. So I work a lot through intuition. So a lot of times I, I really don't know what my work is about until it just starts happening. I guess a lot of it happens to turn out to deal with identity, the kind of what's underneath that, the tethered billow, which is the performance piece. Um, I, it, it took the entire year in parts, so it happened in sections. Um, I think I didn't really know what was going to happen until I performed it because I, you know, I practiced it. You can't really practice destroying something you made, so doing it um, in the moment was very um, profound in a sort of way. So, yeah, I think the reason why I think it was my favorite was because I, it, it was the most complex out of all my pieces, I think, or one of the most complex. It really dealt with... Um, I think when I was doing it, I realized that it dealt with like kind of moving on from something, growing or <laughs> breaking ties. So um, in a way, it kind of embodied everything that I was kind of going through. I guess um, growth-wise, like uh, yeah, I got maybe letting go of my fears, um, found, uh, grounding me in some way, some sort of there's the letting go of weight that I had, or burdens that I had held on before, I, I don't know, something like that. So something really different that we did this year that we didn't do the year before was uh, a collaboration with the media department. Uh, so Salome Milstead also did uh, many classes with, uh, uh, with both students to talk about contemporary film. And uh, they did this wonderful installation that dealt with you know, the, the inside and outside, their public personas and their private uh, lives. So the, uh, you know, the culmination of all this hard work from these students is, you know, is their final show at the San Francisco Museum of Modern Art at Fort Mason. And it's actually called Voice Activated. Which is sort of a play, right? Yeah. Um, so there's a, a, you know, in contemporary, in new electronics, everything is sort of voice activated. But we took a play on it to be like artistic voice. My name is Patricia Branston, and I think this show is amazing, and I wish all three students great success at UCLA. Well, I think the work is very sophisticated, and it's very uh, diverse, and I'm surprised by each one of their pieces, and it's a pleasure. It's really a lovely tribute to the, the work that they're going to be doing in the future, and you know what they've achieved from the whole economy. Uh, just amazing. It's, it's great to see such creativity and mature work from um, so young of students. When I walk around and see what's down there, it's hard to believe uh, this is uh, high school age kids because it could sit in any gallery anywhere. It's just fabulous.
think I think it's amazing how much I've developed and changed over the past two years. This show gave us the opportunity to really show people that we're not just messing around, that we're actually really dedicated to this work, that, that we're passionate about making art. Uh, it, was, it was kind of overwhelming. It was exciting to be there. Um, a lot of people came. Uh, just the energy was really great. Uh, well, next year I'm going to UCLA uh, to their School of Art and Architecture to study visual arts. UCLA, I, it was my dream school. I'd have never thought in a million years that I would have gone there. Well, next year I was going to be attending college uh, at UCLA for the arts program. Um, ten years. Um, I'd like to be uh, working like doing art somewhere between art and design I guess because uh, I find a lot of my work uh, has a very meticulous process in it and uh, but, but at the same time I really like the freedom that uh, fine arts gives me so I guess somewhere in between there maybe doing both at the same time I guess I want to by that time I wish I've, I've I hope that I've done everything but I mean I'll, I'll still be trying to do just a bit, I'd still be trying to explore. Um, I want to, I want, I, I really hope that I could ex pursue art at that, at that, um, that far in the future. But I really, I really don't know exactly what I'm gonna be doing, but I hope that it's something that I'm interested in the art world, something that I want to express. I think I would probably, I don't know, uh, from my perspective here, I would say, Hopefully, art making um, or something to do with the arts. Uh, I don't know. Um, I had once talked about like this one art piece that I would do with like random like spoons and like nylon and I don't know like ancient cosmetics. Maybe that's an art piece that I'd be working on. I don't know. Something really crazy uh, having to do with uh, women or uh, domesticity of. The a uh, woman or something. I don't know how that's evolved. I don't know, some crazy work probably. I, I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, hopefully something along the lines of art uh, and being an artist and just continuing to fully expand and learn and constantly be kind of in that state of wonder. You know, I think that's really important uh, to maintain uh, artistry, I guess.